Near a pool where all action happens. This mask, you put it over your face. And then you don't need a snort. And water can't get down there. It's got a valve that stops water getting in. So um, you just swim freestyle with it. And uh, yeah, it goes good. You just have it over your face. Well, I'm going to do some warm up um, breaststroke. Yeah. So are you going to film the whole thing or just a couple laps? Yeah. Yeah. So I walk some of it, breaststroke some of it, and now I freestyle some of it. Now I've got a mark. Excellent for temperature. What do you reckon? It's about 18 out of the pool. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. And 28 in the pool. Well, it feels nice and cool today, and I'm liking the coolness compared to the heat outside. Oh, I wish I could see G Nation goodbye. <laughs> See you, G-Nation, you fuckers. Uh, they're everything that's wrong with Australia, them and their fans. <laughs> but I liked um, when they did Solid Rock. And um, we've been watching live performances of Solid Rock from the 80s today. I see my old mate Bobby on the didgeridoo at those performances. That was pretty fun. Bobby died when he was 39. I, I remember the day going to the hospital, the day he died to say goodbye. He was really fucked. Because I remember thinking, the guy's so fucking young. This is crazy. Because I was only about 12 or something. He died, I think, 85. He's, he's, um, he was such a fun dude. How'd you meet Bobby? At a, um, it was at the Canbar Buffaloes, the Tugger on Buffaloes presentation day. I think he was there just, I don't know, I honestly don't know what he, he was doing there, but there were other, um, Aboriginal guys there that were like if, if somebody said their names I'd know them um, but I can't remember their names now but they were the the big Aboriginal politicians of the day you know like ones that were the big wigs always on TV talking about Aboriginal stuff and they were all there that day for some reason as well but what, what the deal with Bobby was though he always had a tribe of kids around him all white because he cracked jokes non-stop and he just had such a uh, fun and caring way. And what happened is he'd, he'd make everybody a boomerang on the spot. He'd just carve it out and paint it or, or a spear or he'd start a fire. This is the thing that'd have most boys hanging around. He'd start a fire with two sticks, stuff like that and talk about eating witchetty grubs and, and you know, he'd be going, oh, it tastes like egg, you know, all these jokes and so, Young boys just loved him um, and hung around him, and he and he, he'd give you things. So you, you'd dream that you'd one day you'd have a spear. He'd give you one. He'd make you one, and he'd paint goannas all over it and and all that. Because uh, uh, he he um, he grew up eating and catching goannas and kangaroos and spearing them and and doing all that. So he was. He'd been, had a, a good Western education, but he'd also been raised doing all the tribal shit and he knew how to do corroborees and, and most of the people that can do that dog barking through a didgeridoo, he taught them how to do it. And there's a street in Canberra and there's an Aboriginal, a suburb in Canberra full of Tongans and Aboriginals and all that. And, uh, and you know, a lot of you know, dark guys like to live there called Nunnawal, it's out in the north of Canberra. It's um, uh, 
I'm just trying to think what the name of that area. Um, Nunnawal and then the, the, the mall there is... Um, <coughs> anyway, the Javanungas Avenue or Street or something, it's, it's named after him. Um, Gungal and Marketplace. No, Nunnawal's near this place it's called Gungal and Marketplace. And uh, yeah, a lot of Samoans, Tongans, Islanders, Aborigines like to live in that area. Because all the streets are named after um, Aboriginal people um, and whatever. <coughs> and some of the streets will be named after the, some of those guys that were at that barbecue that day. Um, they were just famous. Oh, gosh, I wish I knew the name. He knew everybody anyway. Like, the day I met Daryl Summers, he knew Daryl Summers. Because he took me to the Countdown Rock Awards. I was only 10 or 12 or something. And... Uh, and that year I met everybody, but he knew them all already pretty much. Like, um, all the bands, Men at Work, Ice House. I met all those fuckers that day. <laughs> and, um, Molly Meldrum. But Daryl, Daryl Summers is part Aboriginal as well. I'm not, I'm talking like a... Although the thing is, Bobby declared me an Aboriginal. And the laws of the land have changed now, but if someone uh, used to, of, of standing or whatever declares you're an Aborigine or a group of Aboriginals, as I, oh, that's how it was explained to me. I had Michael, I've got a friend named Michael. He's an Aborigine. He declared me an Aboriginal as well, but Bobby did too. When I was 12, he declared me part of the Aboriginal, whatever. And I think back then they just declared it and decreed it or whatever. Is it, what, is it decree? What the hell is a decree? Anyway, they just declare it. Yeah. But they say you're an Aboriginal, you can then go around, you know, tick all the boxes. I'm of Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander because you've been declared one by someone that's influential, especially in the in that. <coughs> but Michael's mother was the first Aboriginal woman journalist at the Canberra Times, I think. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but I've had a lot of Aboriginal friends over the years and. Um, stuff like that and they've all declared me an Aborigine they say some what Bobby always said is he said oh he's got the spirit of an Aboriginal um, he's different to all the other kids and I think that's why he liked me because he, like I said he used to take me everywhere that's one of the things like we lived in Canberra and the Countdown Rock Awards was Sydney well he took me he took me to uh, Sydney and we stayed at the Bondi Hotel and then we went to the Rock Awards and all that and Goanna in the hotel next to us, Shane Howard and that. Yeah. Shane, Shane Howard actually wasn't very friendly, the lead singer of Goanna. He seemed a very, um, oh, what's the word, serious guy. Mm. Which, which was really funny because Bobby was always fooling about. But um, yeah, that's the Eurogliders were sharing the dressing room with Goanna and they were really nice people. I was playing um, the Goanna guys guitar and I was playing the Eurogliders <coughs> guitar as well. Because I knew how to play guitar even then. Pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. So you don't have to um, breathe and that and uh, get a headache. I can only do one lap of freestyle at the time at the moment. I'm building it up.
But yeah, water can't get down there. I said that before, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it really is. All these inventions. Yeah. We've got the perfect day for filming. Beautiful sunshine and also you don't have the swimming squad guy yelling over his microphone. Mm. So it's peaceful. He's away for some reason so the swimming squad's cancelled this week. But at least today. Some reason it sucked on my face really hard. <laughs> 